Acorn, back of the news. Uh, a new report from the nonpartisan conservative foundation Judicial Watch shining a spotlight on allegations of voter registration fraud and pointing out a move by the Obama administration putting the brakes on a criminal investigation of Acorn. John Fund is a columnist for the Wall Street Journal. He joins us now live. John, good to see you. Before Thank we get you. to uh, shutting down the investigation, before we get to that, um, Judicial Watch got its hands on a bunch of new documents. Uh, what have we learned about more fraud and corruption allegedly perpetrated by ACORN? Well, we've learned that in state after state, whether it was Missouri or whether it was Wisconsin or whether it was Ohio, there were reports that came in from FBI field offices all around the country to the Justice Department saying this is a problem. And as we know, there were offices were raided in Nevada by a Democratic Attorney General and a Democratic Secretary of State. So all of this had come in. There was an active FBI investigation. And in March, it was decided, well, there isn't enough evidence here. We'll shut it down. The only thing that I can see that happened between the election in 2008 and March March 2009 is the Obama administration came into office in January. Yeah, and and it's stuff like, for example, a seven-year-old child registered to vote by Acorn through a forged signature and a fake birth certificate, uh, claiming that the the child was actually 27 years old. I mean, the list goes on and on, right? So I mean, it's it's that sort of stuff. Well, Ohio was so bad that last week we had a big development. There had been a private lawsuit filed in Ohio last year by the Buckeye Institute, and what they said is this acorn is so lawless that it's effectively operating like an organized crime unit in terms of, terms of trying to subvert our election process. Right. Last week, Acorn stopped fighting the lawsuit, and they agreed as part of an out-of-court settlement to give up their business license on Monday, leave the state, and never come back under either Acorn or any other name. Right. That is big news. That's an admission by Acorn that something was wrong. Because they knew they were caught red-handed engaging in essentially racketeering. But let me, the FBI yes. and the Department of Justice opened up criminal investigation suddenly as you point out the Obama administration shuts it all down claiming well acorn really broke no laws um, let me quote the president of judicial watch given President Obama's close connection to acorn including his campaign's hiring of acorns project vote organization it seems rather obvious why Attorney General Holder has failed to seriously investigate these alleged acorn criminal activities. Do you suspect that Holter halted the criminal investigation because of the president's connection? I don't know, but I'll tell you what all previous administrations probably would have done in something like this. They would have voluntarily appointed an independent prosecutor because, look, President Obama used to be Acorn's lawyer. The, the Obama campaign in 2008, as you pointed out, hired an Acorn affiliate for $835,000 to do get out the vote work. Anything like this represents a conflict of interest in investigating them. They should have appointed an independent prosecutor. That was done in many other cases recently, including the Valerie Plain case under the Bush administration. Of the 137 political appointees at the Department of Justice, 21, apparently, that's about 15 percent, have connections to ACORN. Now, Congressman Darrell Issa calls that political favoritism. Does he have a point or is he mistaken? I, I didn't know that number. It's astonishing, frankly. And it again points out something is clearly wrong because out in the states, in Wisconsin, for example, just last week, five ACORN employees indicted by the attorney general and prosecutors out there for voter registration fraud. While in Washington, no investigation, no hearing in Congress, no investigation of the Justice Department. It literally is as if all of the investigations at ACORN literally stop as soon as you reach the Potomac River. All right, let me switch subjects, if I may, to something that you actually brought to our attention. The Newark airport uh, famously was shut down a couple of months ago when a Chinese student slipped into the terminal secured area. What happened to the TSA uh, guard that let him through? Well, I use the New York airport a lot, and I'm just astonished what happened. It makes my head hurt. The TSA guard who left his post and let this guy into the security zone, shut down the airport for six hours, delayed flights for thousands of people. He was put on two months paid administrative leave. He's going, he went back to work yesterday, and two things we aren't being told by the government. 
We won't be given his name, and we're not going to give, be given any details and any discipline. All we know is he's back on the job at his old post, and the discipline couldn't have been that severe. It's astonishing. Imagine in the private sector somebody being treated that way. It just goes to show you that public employer unions basically can literally protect even the most incompetent of their employees from actual disciplinary action. Yeah, public employees paid by taxpayer dollars, and we're not even allowed to know who it is. That's um, interesting. John Fond, uh, the Wall Street Journal, as always, many thanks. Thanks, John. Thank you. Well, dangerous disease.